in part F we want the electric field phasor, meaning that we're going to want to convert to the phasor domain and to the electric field. So, uh, if we want the electric field, we can go to Maxwell's equations and we can solve it that way. But if we have a plane wave, there's an, a simpler expression we can use, and that's this right here. You can see the electric field is equal to minus eta k hat crossed with h, yeah, vector phasor. So what this does is this cross product here gives us the correct direction, and multiplying times eta gives us the correct amplitude for the electric field. So uh, let's see here. Um, eta, the characteristic impedance of free space, is mu over epsilon, and we just solved for epsilon, and we have mu, so if we plug in our values, we'll get 251.33 ohms. K hat is the direction of propagation, which we determined was the y hat direction, and for h, we're going to need to write what our time domain expression here in the phasor domain. So this would be z hat, the direction is the same in either domain. The amplitude also doesn't change, so we'll have 30. Uh, now, for the rest of this, cosine, we're going to have to use Euler's identity and write it in terms of an exponential, and then we cancel out or um, factor out the e to the j omega t term. So this term is going to be factored out, and we wind up with e to the minus j 0.5 y. Now this 30 here, uh, we have to notice that there's milliamps so let's go ahead and multiply times 10 to the minus 3, because if we leave it as milliamps, we might not get the right, we might forget to take that into account and get the correct amplitude for our electric field. So we want this in terms of amps per meter when we're solving for our electric field. So putting all this together, we get an electric field vector phasor. Um, we multiply 30 times 10 to the minus 3 times this 251 and we're going to get 7.54. Then for the direction, we have to take y hat crossed with z hat. So for that, we get x hat. And then there's a minus sign in front. I'm going to put that there. And then the exponential doesn't change, so we just have e to the minus j 0.5 y, and that's volts per meter. And then for the very last step in part g, we want to convert this to the time domain. So the electric field, there's no phasor over now, it's just a vector, varies in y and t, and that is equal to minus x hat, 7.54, that doesn't change, but now we can use all of those identity and put back e to the j omega t, uh, change this to the time domain, so this will be cosine omega t is the same as what it was for the h field, 10 to the 8th t, and we're left with minus 0.5 y, and that's volts per meter again.